Only one in three Canadians fully understand what consent is. So Western, let's talk about it. Let's think about consent like a bike ride. If you wanted to go on a bike ride with someone, you'd say, hey, I'd like to go on a bike ride with you. And they'd be like, hey, I'd like to go on a bike ride with you. Boom, put on your helmet, kid. You're going on a bike ride. You might hear things like, this feels great, or keep going. These are ways you know they're enjoying the bike ride. Uh, maybe not those ones. If they said no, then that's that. They do not want to go on a bike ride with you. You don't toss them up on a bike and say, oh, come on, it'll be fun. No is no. And if they don't say anything at all, it's still a no. The absence of a yes is a no. They could say, heck yeah, or eh, I might want to. And you put on your biker shorts, get the bike, grab the helmets, and in that time, they decided that they don't want to and start to backpedal. And that's okay. They aren't obligated to go on that bike ride. You'll just have to bike on your own. Oh, and being dressed in bike shorts and a helmet doesn't automatically mean someone wants to ride a bike. It's quite presumptuous to think they do. Even if you happen to be in a relationship with your bike partner, you have to ask each and every time. Say your bike partner has had a couple of drinks and we're not talking about water. They're not ready to go for a bike ride, even if they've told you they are. A drunk yes is not a sober yes. And by law, you need a sober yes. Oh, and just because you bought them drinks all night, it does not entitle you to a bike ride with them. Same rules apply if they're unconscious. The conscious people can't ride bikes, and they definitely can't say yes to doing so. The number one priority is to make sure they're safe. Even if they're just sleeping, they can't say yes to a bike ride. And it can be a scary thing to wake up and find yourself on a bike. Imagine your boss telling someone, you can only work here if you bike with me to work. That's crossing the line. It would be an abuse of power for a boss or a person of influence to suggest such a thing. And just because someone wanted to go for a bike ride once, doesn't mean they'll want to every time. Maybe it was just a one bike stand. You can't say, what are you talking about? We biked last night. You're simply not entitled to another bike ride if they don't want to. Maybe your fellow cyclist is totally cool with biking on paved roads. That does not mean that they are up for extreme mountain biking. You're not going to insist that they go speeding down a mountain with you if they are only interested in paved roads. That's uncomfortable territory, and you don't want to pressure your bike partner, do you? What if Alex here told you that Taylor really wants to ride bikes with you? Does that mean you throw Taylor up on a bike and say, all right, let's start pedaling? Hmm, no. The only person that could say Taylor wants to go for a bike ride is Taylor. When all is said and done, riding a bike with someone should be fun, memorable, and hey, maybe a bit sweaty. But it can only be that way when everyone involved has willingly agreed to participate. So whether it's having sex or bike riding, consent is key.